Thanks for joining us for another episode of The Catholic View for Women here on EWTM, where we give you news and views from a truly Catholic perspective. My name is Teresa Tamio. I also host the daily Catholic radio show right here on the EWTN radio network called Catholic Connection, Monday through Friday. Joined by my two beautiful and very brilliant co-hosts, Janet Marana, of course, who is also seen regularly on Defending Life right here at EWTN. She's the co-founder of the Silent No More Awareness Campaign for Women and Executive Director for Priest for Life. And then our new co-host, Delina Rodriguez, who has been a long time air talent and also producer here behind the scenes. She's also a bilingual air talent and producer, so we really appreciate her perspective. Uh, ladies, in this show, we're going to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart, and that's media issues. And Elena, I know you too, with your background in media and journalism. We're going to take a look at how our culture's obsession with particular types of media, in particular phones and, and selfies, we all have them, but this obsession with social media and being out there on social media, how it can really affect our relationship with the Lord, and in the end, if we're not careful, leave us lonely. That's right. Yeah. And of course, Teresa, you wrote a book, uh, mm -hmm. Me, My Selfie, and I, yes. uh, <laughs> which is available, of course, at the uh, Beyond Me, My Selfie, and I, available at the EWTN Religious Catalog, which delves into this topic in depth. But, you know, I want to say that, first of all, <clears throat> there are good things about social media. You know, there's good things. Sure. And the good things, for example, it helps families stay connected. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I have a, a daughter and her husband and my granddaughter all the way out in L.A. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I use right. my phone to, to right. uh, FaceTime and I sure. see my granddaughter. Uh, fa then Facebook, we share pictures and everyone feels connected because her husband's family is up in Boston. We're here in the New York area. And she's all the way out on the West Coast. So it keeps, yeah. and even for my daughter, who has my other grandchildren in uh, New York, the, the grandkids uh, kind talk of talk. To each other, they, right. they talk to each other on the phone, and then, of course, everyone posts pictures. And so families are connected more. Where it gets to be a problem is, I think, when people start dishing family business uh, and they start arguing and it creates fights. Mm. And, uh, you know, where people are night and day on Facebook and, and they just don't let it go then that's where you as you would say, Teresa, it's way too much over the right. top. There's two things with this that you mentioned. One of them is going into the excess, right. and everything in excess is is bad because right. it's bring, it brings bad consequences. So you want to find that perfect balance. And the other way that to comment on what you just said is when you send quick messages, either text messaging or maybe messaging through one of the social media outlets, right. if one sentence <laughs> fragments sometimes get misinterpreted right, that's right and you may just have a, a good intention when you put out that statement but the other person receiving it will think like oh well what did she mean right. oh my goodness that, that was very so that's right sure. i'm yeah. going yeah. to answer well, with that's, an insult that's what i'm saying elena because i've i've heard of this where family fights have started by because of a, a one-liner a one-line text or a message on facebook that was misinterpreted as opposed to picking up the phone and talking to the person. Where you have the tone right. of voice right. and the inflections that add, a, add up a lot more, more. because exactly. you may have been even joking with that one-liner. Yeah. Or if we're texting too quickly, how many times have we made mistakes oh, yes. in the text and it could be right. totally not even what we were Completely. intending Tended to say. To say. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but, but again, as, as you both pointed out, there has to be balance, and this is what I'm trying to get at in this book, Beyond Me, Myself, and I, because the church has beautiful teachings on the media. And, and one of the things that really excited me when I came back to the church was I actually go figure it started to read what the church actually wrote oh what a concept, <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> and especially because of my area and your area also with it with the journalism degree both of us looking at what what the church teaches us on how to use the media wisely and we've right. said this a gazillion times on this show before mm -hmm. I, I quote you know blessed paul the sixth who said the church will be sorry before the lord if she does not use the media wisely so the media whether it's you know selfies or whether it's other types of social media whether it's the internet in general tv radio those things are not intrinsically evil of themselves, but it's how we use them. And what I've found in terms of the research I've done in this particular book, and, and we talk about this stuff all the time, is that people are becoming obsessed, more obsessed with themselves and trying to find happiness by making themselves maybe someone that they're not or making themselves larger than life through these various forms of media. It's completely out of control. Well, when we talk of obsession, I just want to, I have to share with this. Everyone knows about Kim Kardashian. I have a chapter about her in my book. She's a selfie queen. Selfie queen. <laughs> yeah. 
But when we say she's a selfie queen, I just want our viewers to, to get to the extent to which this is just recently. In August of 2016, she took a four-day vacation to Mexico with her family. And in that four-day period, she did 6,000 selfies. 6,000 6, in, in four, four days. days. In four, four days, it says. That averages out to 1,500 selfies per day and 62.5 selfies an hour and roughly one selfie every minute. Now, that is beyond, and that's what we're talking about. When it gets to this obsessive degree like this, that's when all this technology is bad. But it has a lot of good stuff, like we were saying. But this is obsessive. And, of course, Teresa, in your book, you point out that some people have lost their lives uh, there have taking been, selfies. Yeah, there have been people that, there are many, many accidents that have become major news stories. They have right. a whole chapter. There are people who have actually at various tourist spots around the world, including the Coliseum, mm -hmm and a few other places mm -hmm. that uh, may have like some rough ground or, or you know some areas that might be yeah, well, dangerous to walk in. They're standing on the ledge yeah. of something They're, trying to get that picture. They've actually banned picture. selfies yeah. and selfie sticks because people have lost their lives, fallen to their death. There was a woman who died, I believe, at the Taj Mahal I write about, where she was on a staircase trying to take a, a particular picture uh, and she fell and, and broke her neck. Yeah. And it's, so it's, it's totally out of control. There was just another story not uh, in 2016 about a couple that were somewhere in South America. I think it was in Brazil, and they were standing on a cliff, and they leaned over too far to get a selfie, and they both plunged to their death in front of their kids taking oh a selfie. Yeah. It, it's just yeah. completely out of control. Yeah. Right. And so really what we want to do is to get people to think a little bit about how much media am I consuming, how often am I taking mm -hmm. selfies? Now, Kardashian is an extreme. I mean, right. she basically she built her own empire all around. She even had a book, and I talk about this in my book, called uh, Selfish. And it was nothing but selfies of her. And when it first came out in 2015, everybody was predicting that it was going to bomb. It sold like crazy. It wow. was a bestseller within like a day. International yeah. bestseller. Mm -hmm. And it was nothing but pictures of her, selfies, but in very provocative situations. Oh, right. But, you know, this is where, you know, these phones become uh, kind of a hindrance to relationships. I have seen so many times where you're in, out in a restaurant and you look over oh, at yes. a table at a family, yes. right, eating. And mm -hmm. instead of talking to each other, they're like this, all on their yes. phones, like yes. this, waiting yeah. for the food to come. Not, not one of them are even looking at each other, they're like yeah. this, buried into their phones. Yeah. Then the food comes, they drop the phone, and they start eating. But, but they really? don't talk. They don't they're talk. They're sitting at right. the same they're table same sharing table. bread. Yeah. And, and they don't talk And to with the other. young people, I've seen this, uh, you know, with young people when I go to conferences and something. There'll be a group of young people. They're all in the corner, you know, all together, but they're not talking to each other. They're literally texting each other on their phones yeah. when they're just sitting right together. Within like, can you pick distance. up your head and talk to the yes. person? I have one yeah. to top that. At my husband's company in, in Detroit, it's a large, arch, a large architectural engineering firm. They were interviewing a young man, a gradu college graduate, and on paper he looked great. He had the great resume, great grades. He had all the classes that they needed for this particular type of architectural mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. So he goes in to interview with one of the executives. You know why he didn't get the job? Because mm -hmm. during the interview, he was texting. Oh, my goodness. Not yes. paying attention to the interviewee, answering yeah. the questions, but kind of giving him, like, not his full attention, and he was texting. So when he didn't get the job, he called. And when he was speaking with... He didn't with... send a text to inquire why not? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe he did. But when he called to find out why he didn't get the job, and they told him, it totally went over his head. He was like, so, what's your, and your what's point your is, problem? Yeah, because they are problem? so, yeah, so they don't used realize to that, it. they don't yeah, realize exactly. how much they do it. Yes, yeah, so yeah. some people, if they don't have their phone on them, and they I, feel I have like a few him. people I know that are like this, it's like the with, withdrawal. Mm -hmm. If you say to them, put your phone, because what mm -hmm. I've seen uh, recommended, a lot of companies do this. If there's a big conference, going to a conference mm -hmm. room, they have a, a basket in the middle of the table. They should. And put they tell everyone, phones. put your phone in the basket. That's right. Why? Because we're here to meet together. That means we're going to look at each other, yes. we're going to talk to each other. Yes. So much like you were saying before, Elena is yeah. lost in just words just, on, on a screen coming through to someone. You look at someone, yeah. look at them in the eyes. Yes. Like, what a difference We've it stopped makes. having yeah. eye contact. Eye-to-eye eye contact. Eye -to -eye contact. A lot of catechism classes will have a basket for all the young people attending the catechism well, class, confirmation so. class, yeah. to put, the put their phones in. Because they will not be able to break away from it. And think about it. How many times have we gone out, raced out in the morning, maybe we're late to work, just school, wherever we have to go, and all of a sudden we realize that we're, we begin our way out and, oh, I forgot, forgot my, my phone. phone. Quickly run back. Maybe we even trip over ourselves. Would we do the same thing if we had forgotten our Bible? 
Or a rosary. Or a rosary. It's like, oh, I forgot my rosary. Hold on. Let me go back real quickly in. Yeah. It's like, where are our priorities? It's always have to have our phone, but do we always have, like you said, like I have my Bible here, but do we always have our Bible and our rosary? Or Magnificat or whatever. Exactly. My daily readings. Now, there's a good point to be taken about how we can use religious apps and yes. on our phone and use our phone yeah, to you take can, scripture right. in it and to right. you know, you pray can the rosary get and rosary the, podcasts the morning readings. That, you can so. do the morning readings sure. on your phone. Sure. You can have you the can, Bible here can, and you can do Bible search on here and, and read Saint scripture. Of the day Again, and that's the balance answers. we're talking about. That's that the, the balance. And, of itself and, that's not the bad. and, and exactly. it can be used well. I mean, we're on, we're on Catholic TV and radio and we do this because we're evangelizing. And we're all over social media because it's a great way to evangelize to let people know about events. But the balance and to find out and to really, and this is what I tried to do in the book, and we'll talk about this when we come back after the break in a few minutes, is can we do some self-examination, no pun intended, or maybe selfie examination? <laughs> how much time are we spending with the media and what is it doing to us? Right. Are we using it wisely and how is it affecting the rest of the family? Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you how many times, as you said, you're, you're out there and you see families together. I tell the story when, when I give talks on this book. But one time when I was in the airport, I'm always in the airport, right? We travel like so we much. <laughs> and I, actually, it was when Dominic and I were on our way um, overseas on vacation. And we were in a restaurant having a little bite to eat. And there was a lovely family mm -hmm. sitting across from us. I mean, two mm -hmm. beautiful kids, boy and a girl, and a lovely couple. They looked like maybe they're in their 30s. Mm -hmm. They weren't talking to each other at all. No. Mm -hmm. There was no FaceTime. The kids were playing a game on, on their the phones, iPad or right. whatever it was. Mm -hmm. The father was on his laptop. The mom was texting and then checking her phone. Now, the minute they were getting ready to get the, pl the flight, they said, okay, time to go. Nobody spoke to each other. They packed up their equipment, their devices, their yeah. devices and went off. Yeah. Didn't say one word to each other except time to go. And also, if on, in our daily lives, we are used to being hooked into one of these electronic devices and not talking to our family. When we take road trips, when we are together because we are in the same car, in the same plane, in the same boarding area, we don't have that... We don't even have that inclination to talk to one another. Right, because we're so used we to operating practiced. through this. Right. Eye-to-eye -eye communication. Yeah, so. and also the, the, the concept of selfies, if, if that is affecting a relationship, what kind of relationship do you have with others around you if the time is spent looking at yourself? And I talk about in the book there are types of plastic surgery now mm -hmm. that are for selfies specifically. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There, is, mm -hmm. there are doctors who offer selfie plastic surgery. As a matter of fact, and another time I was in the airport, because I'm always looking at the magazines to see what the headlines are and the cultural issues, there was a story on the cover of New Beauty, which is a, um, a magazine that talks about plastic surgery and the latest treatments and everything for, for good skin, yada, yada, yada. And there was a headline on the cover of the magazine, mm -hmm. selfie plastic surgery out of control. So oh even plastic surgeons who make a gazillion dollars from plastic surgery are Our saying this, this whole idea better. of making ourselves look better, well, undergoing all control. types of you yeah. know, changes yeah. and augmentations to look better in a selfie, but that's off yeah. the charts, out of control. This is what we have now in this culture that we're in, this media-obsessed right. culture. Where's the balance? Yes. We have to find that balance. And, and so when we come back in, in about a minute or so, we're going to take a look at um, our own habits with selfies. And selfies are fun. Yeah, you know, I mean, they, they take in once in a while, sure. yeah, no. but, the, but the selfie sticks, that's a whole other area. There was a, oh. a, a, actually an amusement park in California where somebody thought it would be a bright idea to go on a roller coaster oh. with a selfie stick. And he's going to take pictures of himself with the selfie stick, you know, and the selfie. They stopped the ride because of the, the commotion he was causing. Other places have banned selfies, uh, uh, selfies selfie stick. and museums. selfie sticks, museums right. and Exhibits. things like that because they're sure. causing so many problems. Yeah. Yeah. And everywhere you go now, have you noticed mm -hmm. at all these different tourist places, yeah. selfie sticks all over the place. They're selling them so out on the street. Out on the yeah. streets. Yeah. On like, the street they are. And like bottles of water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're talking about finding real happiness in our self-absorbed culture. Are we overly obsessed with self? That's what we're talking about. And, of course, you can always write us and your ideas and your opinions to our Catholic View for Women website. You can email us through there at thecatholicviewforwomen.com. When we come back after the break, we are going to take a look at our selfie-obsessed culture and some signs that you may be selfie-obsessed and a way to kick the selfie habit. I'm Teresa Tamio, Janet Rana, Elena Rodriguez, joining me for the Catholic View for Women. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Thanks for joining us in this episode of The Catholic View for Women. We're talking about our selfie-obsessed culture. Are you selfie-obsessed? Well, you know what? There is a word for all of us in Scripture, and Scripture is timeless, and I include a lot of Scriptures in this book, Beyond Me, My Selfie, and I, Finding Real Happiness in a Self-Absorbed World, which is what we're basically Discussing. basing this, this mm -hmm. episode basing this episode on. But I also had several scripture verses in the book, and Janet, you have some of them there. Let's start by, by sharing that. Yeah, I want to share uh, from uh, Philippians, and uh, this is uh, starting at verse 2. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, and any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness, or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also everyone for those of others. Have among yourselves the same attitude that is also yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And basically, I mean, taking Christ is the right example there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, the humble that, shall be the humble. exalted, the exalted shall, shall be humbled. humbled. And, and right. so it really I think it's important for us to, if we're always supposed to be emulating Christ, of course we're, we're not God and we try to be as much like him as possible, but that's a, a lifelong journey, God willing, that will get us into heaven. But Christ always put other people first to the point mm -hmm. where he sacrificed his life uh, to right. save mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're not God, I get that, but we have to be more self-aware of what we're doing with our time and how much we're using the media. I, I start out the book in talking about a young couple that Dominic and I saw in Italy, and this is actually what prompted me to do the, do the whole book and to really look into this topic. Mm -hmm. We were in Italy, and you know I love Italy. It's gorgeous. No, it it's, never I know, heard never that. heard that. <laughs> never but heard this that particular region of Italy, the Lake District in northern Italy, is absolutely just so picturesque. I mean, paintings are done there all the time. It's just beautiful. So we were in Lake Garda, and there's a particular uh, cable car ride that you can take up to the top of a mountain called Mount Baldo. And it rotates 360 as you're going up the mountain. So you can see not only straight ahead, but obviously all around you, and it's just stunning. There was a young couple that did nothing from the time they got on the platform to go over to the cable car but take selfies, not even, barely with any background, just of themselves, and his girlfriend was posing, and then he posed for her. Right. They br practically tripped and stumbled oh into the cable car, and going all the way up and all the way down was all about them and their selfies. And I'm looking out, and everybody is like ooing and eyeing, and we're all looking at the scenery. They're not noticing anything around them. Yeah. So you're noticing yourself and not God's creation. I had a similar creation. experience just recently on a plane ride, this young couple next to me, they must have their phones on airplane mode. Mm -hmm. The entire two-hour flight. I mean, I'm sitting there reading, doing my work, and it got to the point of that they were they were swinging themselves in their their chairs and moving around and doing all these selfies. The entire flight. It was getting. I was trying my patience. At one point, I was like, <laughs> you "Can you guys take a breath? Already. Enough already! <laughs> Enough! Basta with the Basta selfies! Basta with yeah. the selfies!" But it was yeah. the whole plane ride. It was like ridiculous, you know, and. I think this really comes back to, again, you know, um, what are we gee, looking can for? you imagine if we prayed as much as we do selfies oh or use our devices? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Lord must be up there looking down and saying, my people, what's going on? The more technology they get, yeah. the less they pay attention to me. Yeah. And I think of, you know, Mother Angelica. I always remember um, she's showing me pictures when I was here with Father Pavone one visit doing Defending Life. And Mother was here doing the live show with Father Frank. And afterwards, she was showing the pictures of the land she bought out, which was going to be the shrine in Hansville. And I was, mother, why did you go so far away from the network? Why couldn't you just you know, be closer to the network? Yeah. And she said, oh, Janet, the cell phone signal out there is very bad, and they're going to have to look at Jesus and spend oh. more time with Jesus. <laughs> there you go. And she, was, yeah, her mother would laugh. She, she was, was laughing. laughing. She, she was like, like oh, laugh. Oh, 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 oh. I got like, him. I got him. I mean, I think back then, yeah. back then when she did very this, true. it was before. So cell phones were just really starting. They were just to starting. The technology wasn't. Yeah. What, but if you imagine what mother would be but, saying now but, on air if Mother Angelica was here with the way people are obsessive with these devices. But back then it you was know? very self-absorbent, and it was kind of a status thing to have a cell phone. So oh yeah. 
were kind of like it makes me special because, yeah, because I have cool. a cell phone and you them. don't have that's a right. cell phone and then right. we went into mm -hmm. everybody has a cell phone but I have a cooler cell phone than right. you. That's right. It does the cell phone doesn't make you and you don't make the cell phone. I've right. heard of this acronym Joy. I've, I'm, I'm sure that you have Jesus heard of first, others second, second, yourself last. 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 Yes. Yes. So we we need to look for joy, not happiness. Happiness is right. is a momentary thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I it's my birthday. I have a birthday cake in front of me, and I'm gonna blow the candles, then some cake. Yeah, but half an hour later, it's like, oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm happy, but it's the kind of the emotion. Goes. Yes, yeah. we want joy. Mm -hmm. Joy is that. Joy is a virtue comes from God, and it's a more permanent thing. And we can even go, be going through a trial, but we experience that joy, that peace of God, and we we are serene, we are balanced, and that's mm -hmm. what makes the difference. And you know, I've seen at Christmas time where they ha they use the, the word the letters joy to make Christmas decorations, and I've seen it with yeah. the, the the Jesus, others, and you. And it is such a good lesson. That I've been yeah. actually using that more like with my grandchildren now. I, I use it when I do my oh, talks sweet. to the young people about media. But here's another acronym for you: ego, easing God out. Oh, wow. that I had none. Yeah, I easing use that one too, God easing God out. out. Because what you're yes. doing is you, it's becoming more, you know, St. John the Baptist said, yeah. you know, I must decrease, he must increase. Mm -hmm. Ego is just the opposite. We're increasing, God is decreasing, decreasing. we're pushing him out. Our exactly. egos are forcing God out. And so in the book, what I try to do is help people come up with kind of like a little bit of a quiz and on how to know signs that you may be selfie obsessed. Now, after each chapter, I have questions and I also have statistics in here, but I just want to throw a few out, um, a few ways out to kick the selfie habit uh, mm -hmm. before we get to our homework. One of the best things you can do if you are in a family situation or really um, even if you, you live alone is when you get home, you mentioned putting that cell phone in a basket. Right. That is a great idea. Dr. Meg Meeker has suggested that for parents to tell their kids when they right. come home from school, mm -hmm. put the phones in a basket. You don't use them when you're home with the family. You can go, go back when you go back to school the next day to your cell phone. So schedule? the family meal time is huge. Right. And you're not going to appreciate each other. You're not even going to be able to taste the food. Actually, there's studies to show there's a connection between too much media and unhealthy eating. I mean, there's Ooh, all kinds of studies out there. So leave the phones alone mm -hmm. when you're together right. as a family. And that includes the iPad and all the other devices. All the, and all whatever, the devices. whatever well, other devices, all the they devices will come in the up basket, with. All of them, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah uh, the other thing to do is to make sure that you, when you're in your home, that you allow for quiet time in addition to the meal time. Are you allowing yourself time to stay away from the phone, stay away from the internet? And as far as those TVs and all these different devices, they should be in one area of the home, not right. in the bedroom, not which the is bedroom. huge. But what's yes. happening now, because the cell phones are virtual, everything is on the cell phone That's now. Right. You can get your TV, you can get your music, you can get, God forbid, your pornography. So that's why when the kids go to bed at night, they shouldn't have the cell phones in their room because there are further studies to show a connection between sleeping problems and kids with their phones. Well, and, and I've seen those studies because they tell you that you should shut the phone, that the people who have their phone by their bed and they keep checking it, they have trouble falling asleep and they, they never, sometimes their sleep cycles, their sleep cycle can be disturbed. Work the way they need. And right. this is especially bad for, for young teenagers yeah, exactly. because they need their sleep. They need a lot of sleep, right. at least eight hours. Okay, wow. Already time for homework. Time that for went homework. By so quickly. Of course, the first item is, of course, uh, to suggested reading Teresa's book, Beyond Me, My Selfie and I, uh, available at the EWTN Religious Catalog. Uh, then number two, we'd like you to pick out one behavior we know is making us self-absorbed and uh, try to you know, conquer that one right, thing. Right, right. Work on that one thing. Number three is to see the papal statements uh, from the World Communication Day, which we'll have on our website. Look at yeah, those. Yeah, there's a number of them recently that have dealt with social media, specifically from, from right. the Pope. So. And of course, number four is to visit our website, thecatholicbeforewoman.com, for more information on all our episodes. The homework is up there, links to all these articles and things we're telling them about, and they can sign up to get our e-letter, be in touch with us. And of course, finally, do go to Facebook and like us on Facebook. Right. And We'll just get some healthy things that we put time, for time to yes. time at our Facebook Everything page. in balance. Everything, Everything in, in balance. Balance. moderation. And, and before we go, uh, should we take a selfie? Should we take a selfie? Oh, should we take a selfie? Sure. Why not? Do one? Come on, let's and just this do is it. A, this is a good selfie. This okay, a good selfie. selfie. Healthy selfie. Here we go. Not available. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That was <laughs> But Thanks anyways. for watching. We hope that you find some of our information on this program about selfies helpful. And maybe you can do your own selfie-absorbed quiz. But remember, don't ease God out. Right. Put your ego aside. Make sure he increases, you decrease. And think about that acronym again of joy, Jesus first, others second, yourselves last. I'm Teresa Tamio. On behalf of our pastoral advisor, Father Frank Pavone, and my co-hosts, Janet Miranda and Elena Rodriguez, thanks for watching The Catholic View for Women, and we will see you next time.